flaking. Now, flaking is an international phenomenon. It is universal and it will happen to you. Actually, I'd say that it probably happens to me less in Latin America than it does in North America, but they flake a bit differently. As I stated earlier, they will confirm with you multiple times and then all of a sudden the time for her to show up comes and goes and she's nowhere to be found. This is very common and you just kind of have to learn to deal with it. Now, this doesn't necessarily mean she's not interested in you. There are some cultural considerations here too. For example, as we already mentioned, she will take priority of her family connections, her social connections, and her professional connections. So she could be gung-ho to see you at the agreed upon time, but all of a sudden something comes up, and this happens to me often. Hey, my uncle just got into town, I have to go pick him up from the airport, I'll see you afterwards. Okay, let me know when you're free. And then, oh hey, by the way, my dad texted me and we have to take my uncle out to dinner now. Okay, let me know when you're free. If she is drinking, which a lot of times when they go out, they do drink here, one drink becomes two drinks, becomes three drinks, becomes, okay, we're paying the check now, but let's get another beer in the meantime. And then before you know it, the entire night's gone past, and again, she's nowhere to be found. I expect these kinds of things. If she says something like, oh, I'm gonna go get drinks real quick, I'll be done in an hour, realize she won't be done in an hour. And usually I'll just say something like, hey, you know what, seems like you're tied up, I don't want you to rush, let me know when's a better time for you. Now, if she's a serial offender, then usually I'll drop a line along the lines of, hey, you know what, scheduling's not working out for us. Let me know if you're free in the moment and you happen to be in the neighborhood, and if I'm free too, we can hang out. And then just leave it at that. Put the ball back in her court, leave it there. She knows what you want. She knows you're interested in pursuing her and possibly taking things to the next level. Just leave it at that. She'll get back to you if and when she's truly interested and actually available to see you. Number five, sudden change in plans. We've already kind of touched on this on a previous point, but it goes even further. So recently I was out with a girl, we had planned an event a couple weeks prior to go to a nightclub with a certain DJ we both enjoy. She actually took the initiative of putting the group together, getting the tickets, planning all the logistics, and actually did a real good job at doing that. She showed up on time, we entered on time, and we saw almost the entire duration of the DJ set. Now I say almost. However, she wasn't truly present with me the entire time. Rather, she was on her phone texting away, and actually a couple times she had to dismiss herself, go to the bathroom to argue on the phone, and then come back in a clearly flustered emotional state. Now I knew better. She wasn't fighting the next boyfriend, she wasn't trying to find some other guy, which a lot of you guys get these ideas stuck in your head. Rather, it was that her dad all of a sudden didn't like the fact that she was out so late, although she had cleared it with him weeks prior when she made the plans with me and the rest of the mixed company group. However, she was noticeably flustered. She wasn't enjoying herself. It was more like I was there by myself the entire time. And then at the end of the night, we planned on coming back to my place with the entire group to do kind of just a low key kickback or an after party. Now I've been seeing this girl for months and months now and typically she's good. But the last few times prior to this, she had also done the same thing. So I asked her, hey, what's up? Well, it turns out she had been fighting with her dad. Her mom and dad had been getting into it. She does live with her family, which is culturally very common in these societies. And her dad all of a sudden wanted her to come home. Turns out he hit the bottle that night, wasn't too happy about whatever, and then decided to take it out on her daughter, who was supposed to be out having a good time with me. So we almost finished the entire DJ set, and at some point she dismissed herself and said, hey, you know what, I can't stay, I have to go home. Although she had plans on going home with me that night and the rest of the group, and then spending the rest of the following day together. Now, when I was new to this culture, that would have really bothered me. However, you do realize once you've lived down here for a while that everything is flexible. Plans are not set in concrete. They're more like suggestions. And you'll notice that, for example, if you're walking out on the street or trying to even drive around here, yeah, there's traffic lights, yeah, there's stop signs, but they're not really traffic lights, they're not really stop signs as we understand them. They're merely just loose suggestions. So keep that in mind at all times. Yes, she could have fully intended to execute the plan as defined by the both of you, but things just kind of come up. And it goes back to previous points to where her family relationships, her social relationships, and her professional relationships will always take priority over you. Now, what do you do in this situation? Well, eventually I talked to this girl and said, hey, you know what, this has been happening more and more lately. Um, I understand there's things that are occurring in your life that are outside of your control, but it doesn't really work for me. I hope you resolve everything. Let me know if you do and you wanna to try to make actual plans together. But before that, we'll do some non-committal, low energy type activities, like you coming over after work and spending the night. Once we establish that you can actually follow through, and again, for no fault of your own, then we can plan on actually getting large groups together and going out again. 
Now at this point, you should be used to loosey-goosey type plans and mixed company running obstacles in your dating life. Which leads me to point number six, jealous guys. She will always have male company in her family circles, social circles, professional circles, or just in her larger friend group. This is inevitable. Latinas are socially driven creatures. And this actually a good benefit too, which we'll get into here shortly. The fact that she has strong social connections and knows how to build deep interpersonal relationships, it's not a bug, it's actually a really beneficial feature. However, if you're a newcomer into the mix, then this could be a point of frustration for you. Again, in her large social network, there will be guys. And a lot of times these guys are passive orbiters or guys just waiting for that one shot. You guys probably know, we've all been there back before you started watching channels like mine to where, okay, I'll get really close to this girl. I'll be the shoulder to cry on. I'll lend her a helping ear. And then maybe just when that time is right, I can sneak in and make my move. Now, guys who've been following me for a while know better. This actually never works. If you do think that works, subscribe to the channel right now and start binge watching my content because you are in serious need of a wake up call. Remember, when this does occur, you need to be cool with everyone in the group. A lot of times the guys in her group might just be her gay male best friends. A lot of times they could be guys that were interested in dating her in the past or maybe she even did date, but they're so embedded in the social group that they're not gonna rip that fabric apart for you. And I usually look at things from this perspective too. As long as I'm giving her awesome, out of this world, mind blowing experiences with me, then I'm not really worried. I don't see these guys as competition. They've been in the friend group for a while. They've likely had their shot. And if she's not actively with them now, there's a reason why. Don't look at them as competition. I see them more as collaboration. If I start getting embedded more in the friend group and the guys and girls like me, then I'm a staple in that friend group. And it's much easier for her to include me more in her life and leave the friend group to do things when she joins my friend group or if it's just she and I one-on-one. -on -one. So that concludes part two of this three-part series. Be sure to subscribe and stay tuned for the next video.